Yo, what is up, Crocs and Clan members? Source and Crocs in here uh, with Pokemon X and Y episode review. Uh, today we're doing episode 18. Uh, so I, I'm being a little quiet because uh, everybody's asleep right now. Um, it is kind of early. Um, but anyways, so uh, X and Y, X and Y. Uh, so today was the Snorlax episode. Um, so the gang uh, basically get, reaches Camper Town. Um, which is exactly like uh, in the game, um, and uh, the Snorlax. The Snorlax is actually in the way. Um, it's not in the bridge. It's actually in the middle of town. And they actually developed. I gotta admit, the story they made up for this was actually pretty good. Um, basically, what they said was uh, the town. You know, they have you know the the land, and then they harvest uh, their pro their their produce, and then Snorlax comes down from the mountain and eats all the remains, like all the, basically all the dead stuff, um, and while he's doing that, he actually plows the ground, which allows them uh, to replant uh, whatever they need, and then uh, after he's done eating, he actually sleeps in the middle of town, and, so, and then they have this whole festival, uh, thanking Snorlax, uh, the, the, the king uh, plays the poke flute, Snorlax wakes up, they offer, they give him an offering, uh, and he starts eating, and then he dances all the way back home. Um, now, when the gang reaches there, they are met with uh, a really loud uh, noise, um, which is actually snoring, like snoring. So when they ask the lady, that you know, she tells them the story. Uh, she's actually wearing earplugs, which is, I mean, I guess you know the town's used to it already. You know, it's it's basically tradition. So, um, so they do that, uh, and then, but you know, they have a problem. The king doesn't want to come down and pay, play the pokey flute in the in the festival, so they're like, okay. Um, the the they they try to do they, Clement Clement tried to use an invention again, and I was like, please no, please no. Uh, it was basically it's like a tiny little little alarm clock, um, and it was supposed to wake up Snorlax, and Snorlax was snoring, and then the waves of the alarm clock were clashing with those of the, of the snoring, causing an even bigger noise, and something like, it, it, it blew up, okay, so that, that I, I shouldn't even be a, a, a means to mention this, um, but, you know, the failures of that stuff, actually, the gang decides they're going to go talk to the king, and they actually go do that, they go to the castle, and surprisingly, this king is like all lenient because <laughs> apparently everybody's welcome, um, which is kind of how it was in the game too. Um, but you know, they lower the bridge, uh, or not the bridge, the uh, whatever the heck that thing's called. Um, and then you know the the, the I guess uh, the guy who's supposed to help the king, he was there. He's like welcoming the travelers, and then so he brings them in the house uh, because they want an audience with the king. And apparently you can just ask for it and you'll get it. So <laughs> that's basically what happened. So they go in and they they go, you know, they introduce themselves to the king and then they start explaining the issues that they have. And the king tells them uh, nonsense, like uh, like basically when they ha when they ask for the, him to play the flute at the festival, he's like, oh well, this is no no matter of discussion. He tries to leave, and then like, please, please, we need you to do this because you know, all the stuff is happening on there. And he's like, you know, well, I develop an allergy to the pokey flute, and then he's like, well, why don't you just let somebody else do it? You know, give it to somebody else. Um, and he's like, oh, I just built up this fear for the pokey flute and all this stuff. He basically just told a flat out lie, and the guy uh, actually told them, you know. You probably shouldn't be lying to these kids. I mean, they're the travelers, right? Uh, I'm pretty sure I feel bit of, bad about lying to these travelers uh, later. And then he explains that uh, he doesn't have it anymore. And they're like, did somebody did it, someone break it or what happened? And he's like, she took it. And they're like, what? And apparently, you know, again, this uh, going with the story of the game, the pokey food was actually in the other mansion. But the way they played it was that the princess of that castle came in and she took it. Like, it was like, I want this, this is mine now, and she just flat out took it and left. Um, so, and then he couldn't do anything about it because he has good relations with the king of the other castle. And he felt kind of bad telling her that she couldn't have this, so she kind of just let her take it. 
Um, and he felt bad about it because it's, it's a family heirloom and he couldn't stand up to the little girl and say, no, well, this is mine. This is our family stuff. Anyway, so the gang goes to the castle because they're like, chill, we'll go get it, okay? And then so they go <laughs> over there. Next we sneak in. Uh, Fur Fru shows up. But basically, the introduction, the princess is like, stupid bitch. Uh, <laughs> like, she was just terrible. Um, like, in the game, it was actually the the king who was asking you to find his fur fruit. But in her, in here, it was just a little bit, she was just annoying as heck. Like, I could not stand her. Like, she, she was, she was the definition of a spoiled brat. Um, she just thinks all highly of himself. And then they start asking her to give back the flute so they can do all the stuff. They're like, you know what? You know, because they, they explain how the, the town folks are going to be suffering. They're like, oh, they could just move to their beach houses. And I'm like, really? These are these are just common folk. They don't have beach houses. Um, and then, you know, so it's it becomes like a this 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 cross thing with them. Um, and then she notices Pikachu. And she's like, okay, you know what? Uh, like, she starts explaining how Pikachu is the perfect way to be a Pikachu. Like, he's all proportionate and stuff. She's like, you know, this Pikachu is too much. It, it, you're not worthy of this Pikachu, so I'll take it off your hands. And then she, like, grabs it. And he's Ash is like, no, this is my friend. You can't just take him, you know, because, you know, overprotective and stuff. And she's like, well, you want the Poke Flu, right? And then uh, he's like, yeah, so you'll give it to us? Like, and, no, we'll have a battle. And your Pikachu versus my Furfru, and whoever wins gets the, po gets the, gets the Pokeflu and Pikachu. And um, so they go have a battle. And uh, it was the weirdest thing ever. I'm not going to lie. Pikachu, I don't know what the heck happened, but Pikachu's quick attack, and then, like, the Furfru went at him. And then when Pikachu, they, they clashed, Pikachu was, like, just... It looked like Furfru hit him, but with his hind legs, and I was like, what the heck was that? Because it wasn't a move. Um, but anyway, so Pikachu gets back up. Because Pikachu actually is the one that wants battle. Uh, Ash was not too certain about that. Anyway, so Pikachu uses Iron Tail, Furfru uses Bite, and then, like, swings him away. And I'm like, okay, okay, so she's not, she's not bad. But then, you know, and then she uses Charge Beam. I'm like, what the heck is a Furfru doing with Charge Beam? Um, but then Ash counters it with the Electro Ball, the big explosion, and he's Thunderbolt, and apparently because uh, Furfu got its hair messed up, uh, it couldn't battle anymore. So, the girl forfeits the match, um, and I'm like, okay, so we won, we get the Poke Flute. Uh, unfortunately, she becomes, like I said, she's a freaking brat, um, and she goes off to like the way it was is that if I won you got the Poke Flu, but since you won I get Pikachu, and then all this nonsense. And then Clement like he walks down because he's a, he was a judge and he like walks down the stairs and starts scolding her like crazy, um, like telling her off and how Ash battled her and like how he risk losing his best friend. He basically just told her straight up everything. Um and like I was I was like proud of him. like it, it, he was just amazing. I'm mad at Bonnie and Serena because they started kind of yelling at him because he he was kind of being mean. I'm like, "No, the girl's being a bitch. Screw that. Let let him scold her." And, uh, like, apparently she likes the fact that she, that he scolded her, so she's like, okay, so you can keep Pilk Flute and Pikachu as long as I get him. And then I'm like, what? Um, and so, you know, they, they, they do the trait, like, Serena and, and Bonnie scheme over there, and they're like, you can do it. You can have my brother. And so I'm like, what? Um, and then they get the Poke Flute, and then they're gonna leave, and then they show the little thing that how, we're gonna take the Poke Flute, we're gonna do that, uh, we're gonna wake up the Snow Likes, and then we can go back and get you later, so you just have to stay put for a little while. And I'm like, huh. Wow. So, yeah. <laughs> um, they end up leaving, they get to town, they gave the Poke Flute to the king, who was there waiting, uh, to start the festival, 
And, uh, you know, the gang gets there, except for Clement, obviously. Um, and he's like, we got the food. And he's like, yay, you got the food. And then he's got to play it. Stupid with Team Rocket. Uh, takes the flute, which was nonsense. Like, I was like, I, I, we saw them earlier in the, a suit of armor, but it was like, no, no. The, the plan was stupid. Like, I like their plans in black and white when they actually made sense and they were complex and, like, well thought out. But this one was just nonsense. Like, they don't plan out and... It's it's annoying. I really don't want to watch Team Rocket right now. Um, but they take the poker food and then Jesse starts to play it and it pisses Snorlax off and he hyperbeams <laughs> Team Rocket away. Up and then they grab the poker food and then the king plays it. Um, and Snorlax calms down. He eats his offering and he goes dancing away. Um, and they do the. I know they've done this before in previous series where the narrator, uh, like like you know. The problem has been resolved, so the, narr the narrator comes in and he starts, you know, doing the like, the outro that he does in every episode. And then like Bonnie's like, "Wait a minute, aren't we forgetting something?" Um, and then it's like, "Oh snap, Clement!" And Clement shows up in his like he's he's in his undershirt and his boxers, and he's like, "What what the heck happened to your clothes?" It's like. It's all a thanks to science. And I'm like, what the heck did he do? And then they cut over to the castle where the little girl's at. Um, princess Allie. Gosh, I should have said her name in the beginning. Um, she's like, she, the princess, like, she, she comes in, like, he's in the balcony. You know what, in the game where you have the scene with, uh, with, uh, what the, what's her face? Um, oh, gosh. Um, the female rival, uh, not, not the opposite gender, the, I forget her name, leave her name down below, because I honestly don't remember right now, and I honestly don't feel like looking up, um, but, uh, yeah, like that, the balcony, uh, she comes in with, like, some snacks to, to be with Clement and watch the fireworks, um, and, uh, <laughs> like, uh, it's, it's, I'm like, he made a Clem bot, didn't he, and then Clem, like, he turns around, and he's like, all about how he left and all this stuff. And she gets pissed and slaps him. Uh, slaps the Clembot and it explodes. Well, that wasn't, like, I, I, I'm pretty sure that was intentional. So I'm not mad about the fact that it exploded because it was supposed to explode. But still, that first one, oh my gosh. See, if you make it to where the point of the object, or the invention, is to explode, then it doesn't piss me off. But when some random thing that he just pops out of nowhere and it blows up in his face because it doesn't work right, that's the ones that I don't like. So if you're gonna make Clemens stuff explode, make sh just make it to where it's supposed to blow up, where it's not just a random thing where you're like, what, what the heck? Why did it, did it explode? Because some of the, some most of the inventions this, might, this guy makes doesn't even have a way for it to blow up in the first place. So I don't know. Anyways, um. But yeah, and then the narrator comes back in. And he's like, "Okay, so now this, oh, so, um, so it was really not bad of an episode. I really enjoyed it. Uh, it was it was well done. Not gonna lie. Uh, the fact that they made it different from the game, but still maintaining that that idea. Um, because even the mansion was still the same. You actually had the Zekrom and the Reshiram statues, and uh, the the maze. They had everything there. Like it looked exactly the same. They they even had the bridge, the archway." Uh, the guy with the Golurk and the, the, it was all there. All of it was there. Um, and they kept the the king, the the, the fact that the Pokéfoot was in the other castle. They kept everything. The, they built this whole mini story around it. I actually enjoyed that about it. Um, it made me, and they introduced a the character which was in the game. Um, and even though she was annoying as heck, I liked the fact that they included this kind of character so you could be like. And it was kind of a, like Clement showed a little bit. Like I don't care that I, I mean Bonnie and Serena can shut their faces. <laughs> like well, Bo I mean Bonnie. Eh, I mean I like Bonnie though, but Serena can shut her face. She's not even doing anything. But I like the fact that Clement was the one that stood up to this chick. Like I I like that. Uh, it gives him more of a personality. Not only because I mean he's the older brother. So and this girl is exactly the same age as Bonnie. So the fact that he can use his his, I guess, brotherly, like, knowledge to to counter this, this girl. Like, that's good. Like, keep, I want Clement to be that character. He's a, he's an older brother, so he should maintain those qualities of being an older brother. 
Um, so, but yeah, that's basically it for this episode. Uh, the next episode, I believe, is the Malamar episode, which is gonna be kind of weird. Um, I think so. I don't know. I know I don't really like Malamar. Like he was, he was one of the Pokemon in X and Y that I was just like, ugh. Um, not because it's bad. I just don't like it. Um, it, it's kind of, it has a cool design, but I, I don't know what it is about it. I just do not like it. Um, but yeah, that's it for this episode. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Um, like I said, this has been Stars of Croxon. Uh, leave your comments, thoughts, and all that stuff down below. As always, episode links to the episodes is down below in the description. So you guys can go watch it and all that, all that jazz. Um, but anyways, guys. This has been Source Cross, and thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys later with a fairy tale episode review.